G'day guys, Greg here. Now I was walking through the supermarket the other day when I came across this product right here. It's Sashi's Secret Home Chef Kit Malaysian Chicken Curry. It looks really delicious on the front and it looks pretty easy to cook too. You only have to add your own chicken and potatoes. Now I'm going to cook this up today and see what it tastes like but first let's crack it open and see what you actually get inside this box. And by the way, this meal kit costs $7.50 at full retail. I did pick it up for six bucks on special. I'm sure it could go cheaper though. Anyway. Oh wow. Okay, cool. So this looks like the coconut mix there. This one is well, the chicken curry it looks like. And here is a little bag of herbs with some chilli, which is optional. Anyway, let's read here and find out exactly how to cook this thing. Now, just checking the ingredients here, like all of it looks really nice. And there's hardly any, which seems like it's going to be a pretty good meal. He's got some secret tips. One of them is to cut all the pieces into three times three centimeters. That's the perfect size. And if you want to add a carrot for color, go right ahead. Okay, well, this is actually about 270 grams of potato, which really isn't a lot. But it wants you to cut them into three by three centimeter pieces, which <laughs> it's going to be a bit hard to do. I think I'll just cut them into like these quarters here. Hopefully, that'll be all right. Even though that wasn't a quarter, that was a sixth. I'm just going to cut them into the size pieces of potatoes I want. And then with the carrot, I will just slice it into slices like this. Now the chicken, well it says 500 grams. This breast here weighed about 450 or something. And some other breasts weighed about 370. So a pretty big breast <laughs> should be enough I reckon. And I'm just going to cut it into, I'm just doing what I want to do. But I'll cut them into fork size pieces. Okay, well I'm going to be cooking this in this wok thing that I've got today. Now it says you need to heat it up to a medium heat. So I wonder if... Oh! Yeah, that seems hot enough. So first we need two tablespoons of cooking oil. I'm using some peanut oil for this. And now we have to add the Malaysian chicken curry paste. Oh jeez. One of these ones that spits everywhere. Hang on. It's going to be a major clean up afterwards. <laughs> Crikey. You just need to stir that for like a minute until it's nicely fragrant. And after a minute, we can add the chicken and the potatoes and carrots. Ooh. And we mix that in and make sure all the food is coated with that curry paste. And then we let that cook for about three minutes. Now after the three minutes, we need to add the Cooler's Coconut Sachet. Oh God. <laughs> it's just going to make a mess everywhere <laughs> this, this meal. But that's all right. Hopefully it'll be worth it. And I also have to add 125 millimetres, millimetres, 
milliliters of water. We'll blend that through. So now I need to turn this up and bring it to the boil. Well, now that's boiling, what I'm going to do is reduce the heat. I'll probably bring it down to a six or a five for this stove. But we just want to simmer it for 10 to 12 minutes or until that potato is nicely cooked so you can stick your fork in and it goes in fairly easily. Now from my experience, potatoes usually take 15 to 20 minutes before they actually get soft. So I might have to leave that in quite a bit longer than it says on the packet. But we'll see. And I might even take that lid off to let some of that water evaporate out so it gets a little bit thicker as well. Mm -mm. Now it does come with this sachet of herbs here. It says that you put it in, well it doesn't actually tell you on here when it says to put it in. It just says step three, add your secret spice pack. And I reckon if it's got, well these leaves in it, you want to add it in earlier so they can, well the flavour of them can go and through the whole meal, wouldn't you? That's what I reckon. So I'm going to add this you know, with like 10 minutes to go and he reckons if you chop the chilies up it'll make it even hotter they do break up pretty easily so that isn't too hard to do but I'm just gonna stick them in earlier the directions are unclear so well I'll just stick them in now right, well let's see how this is going it's looking nice Oh, I did put the timer on, and there goes the timer, and the potatoes actually look like they're, well, almost cooked. I'll just give it a few more minutes with the lid off and let some of that water evaporate and let's get those potatoes cooking a little bit better, and, well, they'll be ready to serve up and see what it tastes like. Well, it's been closer to the 20 minute mark and I think these potatoes are pretty much done. So let's serve this up and see what it tastes like. Just got some rice here. Some basmati for this one. And here's the curry. It looks really nice. The color of it's just Beautiful. Mm -mm. Got a bit of sauce there. That's looking really nice. Now, before I try it with the rice, I just want to try and see what some of this sauce tastes like. <laughs> Pretty creamy. Not really flavorful. Well, it is missing a lot of salt. <laughs> when I cook potatoes, I always add salt to the water. So this is something that you'll probably want to add salt to, to get the full flavor from it. But it tasted all right then. So let's try it like this. Mm. Tastes all right. Like I said, a little bit watered down. I'll add some salt to it. Hopefully that'll fix the flavor problem. Much better. This is a really easy recipe to throw together. And the taste of it is pretty good. Malaysian curry usually isn't one of those really strong potent curries. Once I added the salt, yeah, it makes it taste quite a bit better. But still, it's really easy to make. And well, if you're just looking for something easy to throw together, mate, this is pretty good. And it is definitely something that I would get again. I just add a little bit more salt while I'm cooking it or something. And I just bit into one of those chilies. <laughs> they're pretty hot, but they're not overly extreme. Excruciatingly hot, so that's always good.
But anyway, I hope this video helps you decide what to try and what to buy and what to avoid. This one was pretty good, so I'd probably recommend you go and give one a try if you're into these sorts of things. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time I cook something up. See you then. Oh yeah, this is Greg's Kitchen.